Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is David Milan. I'm an HR professional working in Australia. Today I wanted to take you on a bit of a tour of my Notion workspace and how I have set things up according to Tiago Forte's Para methodology. So there are a lot of uh, Notion Para tours on YouTube. I think mine is a little bit different because it's pretty simple, uh, but I do encourage you to check out everyone else's uh, because that's how you, you learn about Notion is really by looking at how other people have done it. And, and taking what works for you and, and really just copying it and, uh, and then just amending it as you need. So I first came across Tiago Forte's uh, Para Methodology back in October last year. I read through his article uh, on his website. He puts out so much free content. So if you are interested in learning about Para and uh, you don't have the time or, or the, the resources, the, the money to do his course, you really can get so much information just through reading a lot of the information that he puts out for free. So I encourage you to have a look at that. Para, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, it stands for Projects, Areas, Resources and Archives. So it's really changed how I get things done and I found it super useful to, to keep track of all the different things that I'm listening to or watching or reading and it's really helping me uh, to, to keep track of things and, and find them when I need to. I find that Para is really helping me on my journey to becoming a, a fully fledged member of the Intelligentsia and that's really what it's all about. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's start off by having a look at projects. So I have one projects database, which I have embedded in two toggle lists. So you can see there I have personal and professional. So I'll open up personal now and you can see the different projects that I have in there. I group things according to in progress, not started, completed and on hold. Obviously there's another option in here if you did want to group by another category. I have a project category in here so I can look at the different categories that I've assigned to different projects but I prefer just to keep things grouped by uh, the status. So that is my projects database. I will show you a little bit of detail uh, around what I put in each project so I'll open up one of these now. So if I have a look at uh, this one here, the uh, new to Notion uh, three essentials project, I record the date that I completed it. And any project that I'm working on, I am trying to get better at making sure that it has an assigned area. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with, with uh, Para, uh, the A, the first A stands for areas. And I'll go into more detail on how that works when we get to the area section. But essentially, Tiago defines an area as a sphere of activity with a standard to be maintained over time. So any projects that I'm working on are linked to a area using the relational database. So for those of you who are familiar with uh, Notion, any of uh, these ones here with the arrow, that means that it's pulling from another database. This video here, new to Notion, is a video that I put together and you can see that I've linked it to the YouTube area. I'll click here and I can bring up any other areas that I think that that project uh, should be linked to. And that way, if I'm ever in that area, I can see all the different projects. So it enables me to make connections across my workspace. Another helpful relational database that I've put in here is consumptions. So I'll show that later. That's basically where I store anything that I'm reading or listening to or watching. So I'll save uh, podcasts in there and articles and websites and then I'll make notes on them and then I can refer to them later. What I love about Notion is that if I'm working on a project, I can bring up any consumptions or any books that would be relevant to that project. So if I'm doing research on a project, I, I save it in consumptions, or if I'm reading a book, I save it in my books database, which I've, I've covered in a separate video, and then I can bring it up uh, and have it linked to that project. So I can have it all there ready to reference. Another useful uh, relation that I have in here is related projects. So if I was working on a video and I, th and I was thinking I've covered something or I've done something similar in the past, I can find that project and I can relate it to this project so I can very easily open it up and reference it. And so it makes it really easy to uh, create over and over again because you have that ability to pull from previous projects and have it all there at your fingertips ready to reference. So I really like to spend time after I've completed a project doing a bit of a uh, post project uh, reflection. So I'll write down some of the things that I thought about the project and then I'll summarize them up here in uh, post project reflections. A lot of organizations uh, use that uh, in the form of lookbacks. So after a project is completed, they'll do a look back and, and reflect on, on what 
uh, what they achieved and what could have been done better. I think that's a really, really helpful and, and useful way to approach projects. So I try to do that on a regular basis and then that way I can come back and, and think, okay, that's what I'm going to get better at next time. So that is projects. Let's move on to areas now. This is my areas database. I have uh, different areas in my life. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Tiago defines a, an area as a sphere of activity with a standard to be maintained over time. So I think the majority of these areas meet that definition. So finances, uh, journaling, career, fitness, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, parenting, obviously health, all of those things are really areas of my life that I have to maintain a certain standard. And when I'm working on a project, I really like to think in project terminology and, and think about, okay, this project that I'm working on, what area does it align to? And then that way I can be more intentional about my time and more intentional about what I'm trying to achieve. So I'll show you an example of, of how some of these, uh, how some of these work and how some of them are structured. So if I have a look uh, here in YouTube, that's a pretty obvious one. So this is basically a page and uh, I have different uh, relational databases in here. So you can see all of the projects that are related to YouTube are pulling through from that uh, previous project page. And then I've started to do that with tasks as well. So you can see these are some of the, uh, the tasks that I've put together for this video. So getting a bit meta here. So you've got script and film, and then also I can pull in any relevant books that are relevant to that area. So that's, a, that's one example of areas. So I'll show you journaling now. I, I do uh, keep track of, you know, any time that I, I might be feeling a little bit sick. Uh, and so then that way I can look back on it and go, hmm, you had a headache three weeks in a row. Is there something there? Is there something that you should be uh, thinking about? Do you need to see a doctor? probably a mental health professional, but let's move right along. So um, uh, some people think, well, you get a lot of headaches. I do have uh, young children who I'm very grateful that they are, are very generous even at a young age and they share all of their germs with me. So that's uh, one of the, the many benefits that you get from having children is that they, uh, they bring home lots of colds and, uh, and infections from school. So that's probably why I am uh, I do have a few, uh, it looks like I've got a bit of a pattern of, of sickness, but I mean, a lot of this is, is pretty minor. Uh, you know, you have a minor headache in the morning, document it in Notion like a weirdo, and then, you know, by mid morning it's gone and you move on with the rest of your day. So that is a, a, an area called journaling. Uh, I think that's probably enough of a peek into my unusual way of doing things, but that is areas. Let's move on to resources. So this is my resources uh, database. Again, this is a database, but I set it up in grid view, uh, the default view, pretty stock standard, pretty boring, uh, but it, I like to look at it in grid view. And uh, I used to have lots of um, images and emoji icons all throughout my uh, Notion workspace. I'm going through what looks like a bit of a, a minimalist plain uh, phase at the moment. Uh, I might go back to images later and, and uh, emojis, but I kind of like the, the simple, clean and, and crisp look at the moment. So if I have a look at some of these, as I mentioned, uh, this is my readings uh, database. So I have different things in there relating to the books that I've read and books that I'm intending on reading. So I have covered this in a separate video. If you are interested in having a look, I'll include a link in the description so you can have a look at how I uh, use Notion to read books. Another resource that I think is particularly useful uh, is useful consumptions here. So this is basically a database where I save things that I'm uh, reading. So articles, different websites, things that I'm listening to, so podcasts, and uh, also any videos, so YouTube videos. And I will save them in here into my useful consumptions database. I'll make notes on them, and then I can also link them to different projects. So for example, if I bring up uh, this one here, audio for film. So it is, uh, I've got tags in there, audio and video. Uh, what other consumptions is this one related to? and then I can link it to different projects. And, and then if I need uh, assistance with audio when I'm filming a video, I can just click that and then it will show up in that new to Notion as three essentials video, which is, is super helpful. So that has been a, a really quick overview of uh, 
para. I have, I'm not gonna cover archives in detail because I don't have anything in it yet. I haven't found the need to put anything in the archives. But before we uh, end the video, I will just quickly show you the master task database, uh, which I put together based on a, a video that I watched uh, from uh, Marie Poulin. So I'll include a link in the description to her video as well. I found them super helpful. Uh, this is a, a due date uh, view. I also have a completed uh, table. I don't go into this a lot uh, because I, I have uh, this pulling, this the tasks are being pulled through to projects and areas and, and so I don't come in here a lot. If I do look at the task database, I'll, I'll probably just look at unfinished business, which gives me a, a bird's eye view of different tasks that I haven't finished yet. Or I can look at uh, completed date view and do a little bit of a review over the things that I've, I've been working on. So the final one that I wanted to cover is the inbox here. I'm really trying to get better at writing down ideas as I have them and, and finding a place to store them and then process them later. So I'll write down if I have an idea for a business or if I have an idea for a video or even an idea for a, a funny meme, I will write them down in here, make some quick notes, and then later I'll come back and determine where am I going to put it? Is it going to become a, a full project or is it something that I'll put into resources or is it something that, you know, in the light of day, probably not really that funny, probably not a good business idea, so then I'll just delete it. But I am trying to get better at uh, writing things down, getting them out of my head and giving myself uh, clarity. So that's been my Notion workspace tour covering uh, Para. I hope in enough detail that you've seen the uh, benefits that come from it, but not too much detail that you have long ago stopped watching and you are impacting my uh, percentages and YouTube algorithm in a negative way. If you are still watching right now, kudos to you, thank you so much. I will give you a, a quick uh, tip. I read a book recently which talked about the benefit in recalling and reflecting uh, on something that you've learnt and that's a, a really key way to help you to learn it. So we'll encourage you to think about what was most useful about this video. If you do feel confident dropping a line in the comments, please do so, that might help someone else and it will also help me if you did find something useful. That way I, I'll, I'll, I'll know uh, what type of content people are after. So if you have enjoyed this video, I'll include a link in the description to my Notion playlist, which covers a lot of the things that I was showing, but in more detail. And I've also included templates uh, for a lot of the, the databases and pages that I've built, which would I think would be really helpful for you if you are getting started with Notion. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in the next video.